Oops. Um, but anybody uh, watching the video know that the Good Day Internet version of the show on Patreon contains a great idea for a recipe book. <laughs> and a lot of- We're on to something, for, guys. For titles, yeah. We are. Yeah. I'm just not allowed to name any of the recipes. That's- you are banned from the naming process. It's become apparent that's the best. That's for the best. I think it's between Sarah and the community. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to think of, because I use Greek yogurt in so many things. It's like, mm -hmm. what do we got here? Greek yogurt. Oh. What would that be? Greek out. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay. Got See, it. See, we went it. live and suddenly my ideas got better. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I almost said Greek's life, but I think nice. that would have to be Luria's recipe then. Right. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I'll have to give this more thought. Yeah, yeah. Keep but up. yes, right. the, the, yeah, anyway, the, uh, the whole idea was uh, we're making a recipe book, everyone. We're for good or for ill. Semi-confident you will like it. Yes. Semi-confident. <laughs> Way to market that. Got a lot of heart, that's for sure. We got that BD energy, as they say. Uh, so nothing breaking. Any questions about the lineup before we go? I just want to remind myself real quick. The quick, quick hits. I sh I'm I'm not talking, correct? Right. We just okay. we just blaze that's, through that. I mean, that's what the, I remembered. I just want to make the, sure. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say if the urge hits you and you can't yeah. stop, it's fine. She's but. Like I have to talk now. <laughs> just one Generally, more thing, and then I'll let it go. Yeah. Hyper loaf. <gasps> hyperloaf. Oh. But what would make it hyperloaf? Would it be because like because it's really good? Yeah. Could, could you put like um, uh, chocolate covered um, <laughs> coffee beans in the? <laughs> oh that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Espresso filled me. Do loaf. anything you want. It's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's still in testing. My meatloaf does not have any espresso beans in it, but I suppose you can modify the recipe. <laughs> Is it just a lump of meat? Uh, no, it's got uh, pork sausage and ground beef and bacon and hot sauce. There you go for the hyper. Oh yeah, there you go. Put that hot sauce instead of ketchup loaf. on the top. Yeah, Done. yeah. I could hype it up. <laughs> All right. Well, if we're good, then um, we can go ahead and start. Um, Ms. Lane, I know what you're going to ask, and I'll do it. Oh, good. Thank you for giving me a hundred dollars. <laughs> No, uh, I was going to ask if you would read the opening, which you do. So I think we're good. All right. Here we go. Three, two. Daily Tech News Show is powered by you. To find out more, head to dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, June 26, 2018 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Feline, I'm Sarah Lane. And we're very excited to have with us today Ms. Luria Petrucci. You might remember her as Callie Lewis as well. Luria, welcome back to the show. I'm so happy to be here. I missed you. Oh, we missed you too. It's been too long, but you are killing it over there with live streaming pros and Geeks Life uh, and more to come. Yes. Uh, very happy to see that. Thank you. Well, we're going to talk with Luria a little bit about 5G uh, and whether it's a good for anything or too expensive in a little bit. Uh, but our producer, Roger Chang, has put together a fine list of other elements of the show as well. Thank you, Roger. Yes. And you're about to transition to them or segue in a minute. Or See, say. a good producer reminds me that. <laughs> Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Very seamless, guys. The Google Home now habla espanol. The Google Assistant has supported Spanish for some time, but it's now available through the Home, the Home Mini, and the Home Max after rolling out over the last couple of weeks. Three localized versions of Spanish are available, one for Spain, one for Mexico, and one for the U.S. Google's also launching the Spanish-enabled smart devices in Mexico starting today. The company announced earlier this year it would be adding 22 new languages total to Assistant by the end of 2018. Muy bien. Oculus is expanding in Europe, Canada, and the UK, opening up online purchases for the Oculus Go and uh, shipping the devices that may have been ordered already, bringing the device to over 300 physical stores. Oculus Go was first announced back in October, and now it's coming to other parts of the world. 
Apple released the first public beta of iOS 12 for members of Apple's beta testing program. iOS 12 includes new features like group FaceTime, local multiplayer shared AR experiences, new Animoji, even a new Memoji feature. Apple also opened up a public beta for macOS Mojave, which includes a new dark mode, redesigned App Store, new Finder view, and more. Let's talk about Wi-Fi. We're finally getting a little update to Wi-Fi security. The Wi-Fi Alliance began certifying products that support WPA3. That's the successor to WPA2. That security protocol has been in use since 2004. So if 14 years of WPA2 is enough. WPA3 comes with additional protections for devices connected over Wi-Fi that make it harder for people to crack passwords. One of the things you could do with WPA2 was pull the encrypted traffic offline and start hammering it with a brute force attack. You will not be able to do that as easily uh, with WPA3. There's also limits of what data hackers can even see, even if they do attempt uh, to crack it. New routers and gadgets that support WPA3 will get these new protections, and your older devices could get them as well, your existing devices, if the manufacturer updates it. Uh, devices that support WPA3 also will connect with devices that use WPA2. So if you get a new router with WPA3, you don't have to replace everything else in your house if it works with WPA2. My first reaction was, yay, is my Wi-Fi faster? No. Uh, but I mean, obviously, new protections are great. When it comes to new devices, that's one thing. But the router that I currently use is quite old. Uh, we're talking, we're going on a decade, uh, even though it chugs along. I don't hold out a lot of hope that the firmware is going to be updated for this. Well, probably not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, probably not to WPA3. Anyway, yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, Luria, do, do, you, do you feel like running out and getting a new router as soon as these hit the shelves? You know, obviously there's a ton of security conversation. Like this year is the year of security across the board. Like everybody's talking about security and privacy and all of this stuff, right? I, I don't see, you know, this particular thing being something that everyone does. Like it's going to take years for everybody to kind of move to these new devices, except for Sarah, who's ready to, should, should have probably upgraded a couple of years ago. But... <laughs> But yeah, you know, I think I think uh, there will be probably a lot of news stories, PSAs, things like that about it. So I see that coming. So more people will probably be aware of it. But I don't know that people are going to be really motivated to do that. I, and I wish they I wish that I could disagree with you <laughs> because they should. <laughs> know, right? They yeah. should be. Uh, and 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 we did have, you know, we had the. Uh, um, the attacks recently that that sort of encouraged people to update their firmware, and I don't even think those attacks, no. uh, the VPN filter attacks, probably got in as many people to update their firmware as they should have. Um, I mean, I was listening to that the you know those PSAs in the car, and I was like, meh. I mean, even you know me, I know the importance of all of it. You know, it was just like it takes time. We're busy. Yeah, and and it's it and you should do it. Yes, <laughs> uh, but you should also floss, uh, and you should uh, not go swimming an hour after you eat. And, and we all know these things, and, and we break them. Uh, that said, it, it it is important, and mm -hmm. and and so I don't know. I mean, I, I get what you're saying. I I would encourage everyone to to take that as a as a warning and, and go check your firmware today. But uh, WPA3 is not that it's not a firmware update that you absolutely have to have. And I so I think you're right. As far as the slowdown of the rollout goes, this isn't even a, an essential security update that you need to have to protect yourself. Uh, I wonder, I, the, the, the last thing I wonder about this before we move on, uh, I wonder if you're going to see the mesh network routers, uh, get in on this mm -hmm. because they're one of their advantages is they update your firmware for you. So you don't have to think about it like the eros of the world. So I'm curious if, if they'll be rolling out WPA three as well. Haven't heard anything yet. And how quickly ISPs will actually implement that their free routers that they put in people's yes. uh, places. So absolutely. I always wondered why the swimming after eating, <laughs> uh, was a thing where no one ever says things like, 
don't pole vault for an hour after eating. That's a good point, sir. <laughs> uh, or just, any other exercise. Security protocol. That's Got it. Got it. Mozilla announced it's testing a Firefox feature called Firefox Monitor, which is a security tool that uses Troy Hunt's Have I Been Pwned? If you haven't heard of this database, it lets users search by their email address from within the browser and possibly set up alerts if your account might be compromised. Firefox browser will let users know the extent of the personal data exposed and offer tips on how to secure their account if there's an issue. The Firefox monitor tool rolls out next week to around 250,000 users. One password is also integrating the Have I Been Pwned database into the breach reports feature of both its web-based version and eventually its desktop app as well. Yeah, this is a this is a cool tool because it will uh, allow you just by email address to find out if there's a possible breach. Now, just because your email address is in a breach doesn't mean you've been breached. Maybe you were good and changed your password since then. Uh, but it, but it's good to know this and and having it not only easily available from within the browser, but also being able to set up those alerts will be really cool as well. I'm just bummed because I just switched from uh, one password to LastPass, so. You know, I, I you, you I meant to look this up earlier. Uh, I felt like LastPass had added uh, some kind of uh, database integration before oh, as well. Yeah, um, but that but when, yeah, I'll I'll have to check on that in a second. After losing its license to operate in London last September, Uber has some good news. A judge has granted Uber a provisional 15-month license. One of the issues was how Uber was monitoring and reporting complaints on the platform and how it shares those complaints to the police in cases when they related to criminal activity. Another issue was if Uber had been trying to evade regulatory scrutiny with that gray ball software. Transport for London said it will, quote, closely monitor Uber's adherence to the regulations and swiftly take action if they fail to meet the required standards. Uber, for it, its part, said it will, quote, continue to work with TFL to address their concerns and earn their trust. So the short version of all of this is Uber says, we're really, really sorry. The court says, all right, you got 15 months to prove you've changed. And TFL says, we are going to be watching you very closely during those 15 months. Well, Uber has very little incentive not to play very nicely. It's a huge market in London, or was anyway, before the whole thing was put on hold. Uh, the fact that Uber appealed this is 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 not surprising in the least. I think Uber initially, in its appeal, asked for eighteen months, got fifteen, but that's a year plus. I, I you know, it's, I. I'm sure there are catastrophes that ha have yet to be unveiled with with any company the size of Uber, but it sounds like for the most part the the city and the company uh, you know are are going to move forward. Well, I, and and keep in mind, uh, Uber didn't have to stop uh, uh, providing service in London, even when London said they were revoking the license because they appealed. They were allowed to continue to operate during the appeal. Right. So this is this is very good news for Derek Rashahi, who is basically trying to say, look, we know <laughs> we know that the the folks under Travis Kalanick did a lot of bad things. We're not going to do those anymore. And they spent most of the court case not defending their past, but admitting, yeah, we broke the company broke the law back then. Here's what we're doing now to make sure that, you know, for instance, they used to allow people to test their eyesight with an app that had not been proven to really be reliable. Uh, and Uber is like, we're not, we're not allowing that anymore. We got rid of that. We're making him go to an actual eye doctor or pr provide an eye doctor certificate uh, from the NHS, stuff like that. So you, they, they've worked really hard to change that. The Verge reports on a new security camera from Telecom NTT East and startup EarthEyes called AI Guardmen. Using open source machine learning from Carnegie Mellon, it looks for suspicious movements in a store and then alerts a shopkeeper when it thinks it's detected it. NTT East admits it's not perfect yet, it acknowledges that common errors include misidentifying indecisive customers. Maybe they seem suspicious, but they just don't know what they want, or maybe employees restocking shelves. No studies have been done on its accuracy either. NTT hopes to introduce it into 10,000 stores in the next three years. AR Guardman goes on sale in Japan in July for $2,150 and then $40 per month afterwards. So this feels like it might be a little problematic, yeah? <laughs> 
very problematic. I can, I can see all kinds of problems coming from this. Like, because you know how we trust our Google maps or our Apple maps and just drive off the edge of a cliff, right? <laughs> like, well, we don't, but yes, well, I, right. I know what you mean. We yeah. as in the, you know, royal everybody, uh, silly people, but, um, they, you know, like if it, we trust technology so much sometimes that I think that that could cause a whole lot of like lawsuits of being accused of things and that, that didn't actually happen with when people get a little power hungry because of that. Well, and I mean, there's so many examples, you know, we could we could bring up of someone saying, hey, I was, you know, unfairly targeted because somebody, exactly. you know, was confused by the, you know, I don't know, something that set them off, but was totally inaccurate. And that's completely unfair. What is a suspicious movement. If right. I know that, maybe I'll try not to do it if I think that the software exists. But otherwise, even the company saying, yeah, this is, you know, we're, we, it has a long way to go is like, okay. That's that's the problem is marketing this at the end at the same time admitting we, did, we don't really know how accurate it is. Uh, <laughs> I mean, on the one hand, I want to say this is a tool like any other tool and it can be you know, put in place badly or it can be used well. If used well, you just use it to, to alert you that like, hey, somebody might be acting suspicious over there, keep an eye and you don't do anything about it except maybe be a little more alert, you know, and stop working on the other thing and, and keep an eye out. Uh, that's no different than just keeping an eye on the cameras in the shop. But if people, like you say, are going to use this to as they're like, well, the computer said that you were doing some suspicious, so get out of my store, right, yeah. that can cause a problem, especially when machine learning algorithms have been known to adopt the biases of the data on which they were trained, which can pass human biases right into the machine learning. Yeah, I think on the surface, if you consider this something that could eventually keep someone's eyes being trained on security cameras all the time, not to miss anything, great. That saves a step for anybody working in a store because there are suspicious, you know, things that happen in stores. I mean, things get stolen and that sort of thing. So it's not a bad idea. It just seems like, ooh, you know, it's 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 rife with issues until it's working better. The world seems captivated by IGTV. Uh, I see lots of people talking about it all over the place, but Instagram is not resting on its laurels. Uh, video calling is rolling out to Android and iOS users. They announced this at F8. It's coming to you today. Let's up to four friends talk together through Instagram Direct. You can even keep looking at other parts of Instagram while you're on the call if you want to browse through Instagram together. Similar web told TechCrunch it estimates the average time spent per user on Instagram has risen from 29 minutes a day in September to 55 minutes a day now. Instagram also now divides the Explore tab by topic and hashtag, uh, and also effects from partners like BuzzFeed or Ariana Grande will show up in Stories if you follow their account, but they won't show up if you don't. So only the folks you're interested in will add these kind of third-party filters and, and effects to your stories. Luria, I, I know uh, IGTV is of interest to you mm -hmm. in particular. What do, you, what do you make of all these Instagram moves? Instagram is killing it, to be honest. Like, I, I don't use Instagram as much as I should. I am about to... Like they are motivating me to have to use that platform. Uh, I think the killer feature of this particular option is being able to browse while chatting. Huge, good move right there. Um, but then, you know, IGTV, like we're about to kick off an experiment with Geeks Life vertical video across the board. So, uh, you know, vertical video and Instagram's options, they are, they're rocking it. And they're, I, I think it's, you know, it's definitely not going to take, take over YouTube or change, <laughs> change YouTube's trajectory, but I think it can make a big impact in the, the industry. Yeah. Uh, it, and, and I hear just anecdotally, I don't know if you guys hear, feel this, the same people talking about Instagram as the, the safe social network is the one they don't mind being on. <laughs> what, say safe. Well, I safe may be the wrong word, but it, the the one that doesn't bug you, like the yeah. the one that you're like, you know what? Sometimes I just do Instagram because I don't get so angry or upset or et cetera. People et cetera. do get angry and upset about the other platforms. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know for me, I spend a small amount of time on Facebook just to kind of keep up, but I don't launch Facebook on a daily basis. I mm -hmm. launch Instagram five, ten times a day. 
And it's usually kind of mindless, oh, I have like a minute to spare type thing. Like what are the new photos? I'm not really participated in in, in it, any live stuff and I don't even really look at all the Instagram stories, but there's a lot of volume there. I know that that's my go-to. If I want to know something about the news, I'm gonna launch Twitter. You know, this is obviously all happening from my mobile, but I use Instagram a lot. I post less, but I absorb more. So mm. that's where that yeah. time is coming from. Very, very cool. Well, I Instagrammed that conversation just. <laughs> is that what you were busy doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very, very cool. Good job. Uh, folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, be sure to subscribe to Daily Tech Headlines. Uh, comes your way as a podcast on the Amazon Echo and the Google Home at dailytechheadlines.com. So uh, Luria suggested we sort of check in on 5G to see how it's doing, because there's so much hype about it. Uh, and it is coming. Uh, by the end of this year, Verizon and AT&T will have test markets out uh, and available. We might actually get phones that can use it by next year. Uh, up until then, they'll, they'll probably be doing hotspots, little pucks, uh, mobile hotspots that you can use with it. But there's a lot of controversy still about the cost of rolling it out and whether it actually can return on its investment. Uh, there's there's different views on this. NTT Docomo's CTO Seso Inoue in 2016 at IEEE in Kuala Lumpur uh, said that's all a myth. 5G will use existing towers and backhaul. It's not it's not going to be more expensive than LTE. In fact, it should be cheaper. Verizon's soon to be CEO Hans Vestberg estimated the cost at 200 to 400 dollars per home passed. He called that massively cheaper than fiber, although fiber, depending on the estimate, is anywhere from $400 to $700 per home passed. Uh, so it kind of depends on what you're talking about. If it's compared to LTE, there's more room for disagreement. If it's compared to fiber rollout, it probably is cheaper. And millimeter wave reach is proving to be a little greater than people originally thought. It's about 300 to 700 meters. Previous estimates were for 200 meters. That means you can have the towers farther apart and still provide good coverage. But the problems with 5G is the signals uh, tend to be interfered with by trees and rain. <laughs> Uh, that means you have to have different equipment to battle the, that interference. That requires different locations. So even if you can keep them farther apart, you might have to put them in different places than LTE. So maybe in a way isn't quite as right about using existing towers. And Frank Rayall, uh, who blogs about this sort of thing and is a consultant, believes that the coverage problems will mean operators will have to pay more to deploy 5G than they did 4G. So there's there's not agreement about this, Luria. But uh, you know, in the end, we all know where the cost will be passed along to, and that's us. Of course, and, and I think that's what most people are concerned with. You know, whether they have to. They were talking about infrastructure being implemented across across the U.S. It, because this, the the units will be smaller, they could attach them to things like lamp posts and uh, stop signs and things like that. So you're not putting these massive towers in like right outside your home, which would be a great thing if they could use infrastructure that already exists, which would lessen the cost. But at the same time, a lot of those would have to be, you know, there, and so the 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 interference with the stop sign and all of that stuff like that that concerns me tremendously i don't see you know us being able to kind of walk down the street very effectively and still be able to have that connection but you know i asked my community what their thoughts were and how excited i was expecting them to be very excited very you know like yes let's get 5g and across the board they were like meh like, I'd rather stick with 4G and I'd rather keep my money in my pocket. So that's the other question. I mean, 5G theoretically can go up to 10 gigabits per second. We're not going to see that. Just like with LTE, we didn't see the maximum speeds out the gate. But out of the gate, we should probably see around 400 megabits per second. Uh, and the other big thing that 5G can deliver is reduced latency and reduced lag. Uh, the, you know, the wow numbers are things like, uh, a thousand times more bandwidth per unit area, ability to stream 8K video in 3D, download a 3D movie in about six seconds when it would take six minutes on 4G. But if your community is 
sort of like, okay, but I don't have any 8K videos. What does it take to get people more excited? Because granted, I, I remember some people being skeptical about LTE. They're like, I'm not sure what I need it for. And then HD video right. streaming came along and people are like, oh, I get what I need it for. Is 4K video streaming compelling enough for people to want to do that? Or, or are we starting to reach the limits of what we need bandwidth for on mobile? And we're going to need to push what the devices do more into that desktop area for people to say, oh no, I really need to be able to have that higher speed. Yeah, you know, Dave, Dave Peterson in my community, he, had, he asked the question like, we, what are our apps, like we, we can't do anything else with our phones. And I said, well, you know, I think if we look at the history, like when we had the iPhone 3G, we had certain types of apps. Now the apps have expanded and they've built on top of what the capabilities are. So I think I think it's hard, just like Steve Jobs said, like people don't know what they want until they see it, right? I'm, I know that quote is incorrect and I paraphrased there. So yeah, don't, yeah. don't hate on me here. Um, but, you know, like they people don't exactly know exactly what they can get or what can happen until they see it in action. So I think once it starts to roll out and apps actually create new innovative ways of using all of this data, that's when we'll start to see the interest increase. Also, yeah. uh, I know one of the pitches for 5G is that your network sensors, your your Internet of Things, can have their their connection built directly in. Yeah. Uh, there, there's some debate about whether that's really going to happen or we'll keep using Wi-Fi, especially WPA3 has, has a new part of its spec that allows you to scan a QR code with your phone and connect a device without, ha you know, to make it easier to connect these devices. So a lot of people still think Wi-Fi, especially in the enterprise, will be used for that. But... Uh, there may be other mobile devices, and, and to your point, there may be other uses that 5G allows uh, for sensors and Internet of Things that we just haven't just taken advantage of yet because we didn't have the bandwidth to do it. Uh, there's also the fact that there's a 90% reduction in network energy usage. There may be some savings there. Uh, if you're in an area of the country where you only have one ISP provider and the best they can give you is 40 megabits per second and Verizon rolls in with 5G uh, to your home, you will definitely replace that cable provider. Uh, so there's lots. It's, it's hard to tell because there's lots of different aspects of this that the companies are banking on. What do you think, Sarah? Well, I, okay. So, you know, whenever I see like you could stream 8K video in 3D, a 3D <laughs> movie would be downloaded in six seconds. I, I, I don't personally need that right now. Yet. You know, never, never say never, but it, that's just not something I'm like, yeah, six seconds. However, if that sort of thing is six seconds and that's a parameter for how, uh, you know, we can uh, look forward to faster coverage overall, then that means a lot of the stuff that I'm currently doing that takes a few seconds is more instantaneous. It's kind of like when, you know, a web page used to launch, however slowly it did, and images loaded, you know, one by one on a web page. It's like, now when that happens, we all go, what's going on? Because we're used to everything loading instantaneously. So that's what I kind of take from all of this. It's it's going in the right direction. But yeah, as you mentioned, infrastructure issues and um, uh, passing the non-savings along to customers is, you know, we, we get this every time. Yeah. And gamers like the latency and the lag reductions. It, it may be sure. that 5G catches on for lots of little reasons, uh, if it catches on. Not, and, and that's why it doesn't look like like there's an obvious one big reason for it right now. So I don't see why it wouldn't catch on eventually. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. not going to go away. You know, something has to come out, right? Well, Verizon and AT&T are spending a lot of money they to don't. put it in, you know, and so is NT Docomo and so are companies in Korea, SK Hynix and, and others. So uh, yeah, it, it's going in. <laughs> They're going <laughs> to do their go darndest <laughs> to convince us. Uh, and, and usually what happens is, you know, early adopters pick up stuff because it's new and then we start to see what it's good for. And then everybody goes, oh, well, that's that's pretty cool. Maybe I should get that too. So. Well, thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit. You can submit stories. You can also vote on stories all submitted by others in our community. DailyTechNewsShow.reddit.com. We're also on Facebook, Facebook.com slash groups slash Daily Tech News Show. And we also get your emails. And sometimes we read them like that. Now. 
That is truth. Uh, Timmy D writes, uh, he was talking about Good Day Internet, which by the way, if you aren't familiar with Good Day Internet, it's uh, our pre and post show where we talk about all sorts of things and often relate to the, the show in general in an expanded way. Timmy D says, on episode 3310, uh, you were talking about whether things are generally improving for humans as tech advances. 5G could be part of that. And while Tom was saying, yeah, Roger was a little bit more pessimistic. The group, uh, Gapminder.org has some really interesting TED Talks and data tools on their site that show globally how things definitely do get better as time goes on. The patriarch of the group wrote a really interesting book called Factfulness that talks about why humans tend to get things so wrong. <laughs> their recommendations remind me of how Tom tackles breaking news without getting wrapped up in the drama and the hype. No offense to Roger, of course. Anyway, I thought you'd appreciate what they said. Thanks for being awesome. Interesting. Although yeah. factfulness just sounds like truthiness, truthiness. to me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Also, I, I, I take mild offense. But, you know, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> well, I, th I think, yeah, I think that Timmy was was saying, hey, we all, you know, have complicated feelings about this. Here's some more information resources. Yeah, it's it's natural for humans to think a little negatively because it's an evolutionary advantage. If if you're worried about the wildebeest uh, being, you know, or the or the lion getting to you, you're more likely to survive because you won't put yourself in harm's way. So you you, you have to consciously overcome that. Uh, to be able to see what's really going on sometimes. Well, thanks to Timmy D for writing in, and thanks to everybody who writes us at feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. And special thanks to Larry Petrucci for being with us. This is the first time you and I have been on DTNS together, so very special day for me. For it's me so too. nice to see you again, um, and uh, I know everybody was really excited to have you on today. Let folks know what you've been up to and how they can keep up with your work. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for having me. It's so good to be back. Um, and, uh, we are streaming live on Twitch five days a week and doing uploaded videos, uh, on well, uh, YouTube, uh, twice a week as well. So, and IGTV coming up <laughs> vertical videos. We're doing it. Oh boy, I can't believe I'm doing it. I do, do, do you have that same thing that we do where you're like, oh but God. we were trained to hate vertical videos. I have been yeah. preaching, like I teach live video on live streaming pros, right? And I always say, turn your freaking phone landscape. And uh, now I'm, uh, well, you yeah, know, I'm testing it. I, I gotta see if this is the future or not, yeah. or if things are changing or not. That's what I do, so. Exactly. You know, when film went from black and white to color, it changed lighting and everything. So TVs just, went from square to to widescreen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It all it's always it's always changing. Uh, you know what always is going up, we hope, is the number of patrons we have. Right now we have six more patrons than last month. Just need four more to make my birthday dreams come true. Uh, so check out all the perks. One of the perks, if you back us at any level, is you get access to Good Day Internet, the full pre and post show plus DTNS all in one file as an RSS feed through Patreon. Uh, you can check that out and find out all the other perks for joining our community at patreon.com slash DTNS. Our email address, once again, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We love your feedback. We're live Monday through Friday as well. If you can join us, great. 4 to 30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC is the time. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Scott Johnson will be with us tomorrow. We'll talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> 360 video. I didn't even think of that. VR. Live streaming VR. Yeah. I also need more bandwidth for that. Oh, yeah. that's That would be a good point. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Can't video just stay 2D? Or <laughs> offer talkies. Who wants talkies? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows what real color is. Keep it in black and white. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to keep their tethering um, policies the same. Oh, Probably. they'll get even stricter, won't they? Oh, no. My guess is with 5G, we go right back to data caps and all of that. Like the, the plans become like it's unlimited on LTE. Yeah. But yeah, and, and you'll get, you know, uh, and, and they'll probably be higher. 
bandwidth caps than they used to be because because 5g is so much faster but yeah i bet they start with caps that's they are going to Um, oh great hey roger can you send me a link to the um to the live stream i i didn't get to log in and see comments uh oh sure yeah, yeah we <laughs> actually don't have comments on the live stream oh, oh okay we have the chat room at, oh, I I, so on the, IRC, the irc got it got it okay um no IRC, worries then irc chat ah, uh, got it. oh also showbot dot chat realm dot net is where the title suggestions from the audience are um, coalescing coalescing oh. coalescing <laughs> such a big word there fancy is it this it, it does contain a lot of uh, consonants <laughs> and vowels coalesce it's funny and Very maybe it's because to I don't you know have enough friends or friends that. But I don't know. I want to chat with them this way, but I do a fair amount of one-on-one -on -one chatting through Facebook Messenger. Mm -hmm. It's like the same way I use FaceTime, often with Android folks, or I don't know, maybe we're just using Messenger for whatever reason. I can imagine using that with an Instagram if that's just where I happen to be, and you can yeah. see if the person's online. But I never chat with four people at once. I mean, this this is obviously different because we're doing a show, and this is the way that we've set it up, but... Is that just, is, is it like a family thing that I just am missing? Are I, we doing this? I haven't chatted with more than one one-on-one -on -one person like in a, in kind of a group chat since like, like 2007. And that's yeah. because all of us were planning like, what are we going to do after work kind of thing. Right. Um, actually, no, no, 2007, I... 2010. That was oh, like, wow. So... The only way I use them are like business reasons, production meetings and things yeah. like that with multiple people. It's like, you know, 32 people with face with FaceTime coming up. Like, who's going to use that? Right. I, I video chat with multiple people every day from one o'clock. And well, I that's said the business reason. we have a specific purpose for doing this, it's not because we're like, hey, what Hang are you up out. to? What's See, up? We just want to have lunch. chat. Let's call her. Uh, no, in all seriousness, though, I we do regularly do FaceTime video with Eileen's sister, uh, like at Christmas and Thanksgiving and just like if she has a big, like when they bought their house, they face. So we kind of do that. But what's funny is, Eileen and I gather around one of our phones exactly. and they all gather around one of their phones. We don't do multiple. Well, right. if you're in the people. same room, it doesn't yeah, make any sense. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's because it's, it would be odd to have in the same room and everyone on their own device. Cause it feel, it would feel oddly unfriendly. Mm -hmm. like, you know, the yeah. whole point is it's like to get everyone around. Well, and Instagram oh. has in the group chat, settings that just is sort of like sharing other people's posts and then chatting about them. I am in a couple of groups that have kind of like one group is just sort of like, look at this crazy photo this person, you know, posted here, share it with us. You know, we kind of talk about it. So I get the idea of convening to talk about something that's happening on the platform, but that's at my discretion when I have time. It's not, you know, a chat where we're all, you know, on video with each other. But again, maybe I'm just missing the 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 really cool part of this. Actually, no, I take that back. When we went to Vegas, we did the what was the thing that we used where everyone could chat at the same time over SMS or not SMS. What was it? I was you trying to text keep... chat though, right? Yeah, it was a text chat. Um, yeah, yeah, group me. Group me. Yes, that was it. I think that's, that's okay. That feels very different to me. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's like WhatsApp. You can do that on WhatsApp. Yeah. yeah. But but at the same time, I also, it was, uh, in fact, it, Tom and Roger and I were at lunch the other day, you know, and a woman's walking through the parking lot, you know, and she's obviously FaceTiming or whatever it is. And I'm just like, I just, I don't, I mean, she, now she has to hold her hand up. I, I just very rarely do that. I very saw rarely. it in New York. I saw it in London. I saw it in Australia. Like, it's just, it's. It's a weird thing that it's a the thing. entire world seems to be doing. I know. And maybe I'm just sort of like the lighting's bad or, you know, like I'm just so used to kind of like what angles are right. I guess it depends on who you talk to. If I was talking mm. to my mom, I don't care if she thinks I look horrible. But but yeah, it's just it's some some folks really like that that video chat 
and some of us don't. Uh, title, Roger? Do you have, did you um, call one out of the suggestions? Well, I I um I liked uh, checking in on five G by Captain Jack. It's good, right? It just yeah says what it is. I like that too. I mean, there was the other. What can five G do for me? But mm. checking in on five G, I think, covers everything. I'm good with that. And the other sun. I'm going to run, guys. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much so for being much on today's for, show. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm sorry it took so long to get scheduled. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, thanks again, Luria. Next time we'll we'll bring tacos, I promise. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have a great day, sir. It was great All to right. see you. It was great to see you, Luria. Have a good one. Get to back soon. Ray has something to say up there. I don't know if you can hear that. She says, hyper loaf. Bye. Hyperloaf. Buy a Hyperloaf. <laughs> I want it. Well, probably TMI, but uh, it is for, for those of you who have eh, dogs might be the same way, but uh, definitely for cats, there's kind of a seasonal shedding thing that happens. Oh my gosh. Yes. It's happening for Sawyer right now. Yes. It, and it's like, it happens overnight and every year I'm sort of like, what's that? Oh yeah. It's that season again. With cats, shedding and self-cleaning tends to create the phenomenon known as the hairball. Mm. And we are not happy. Fans of Bloom County will remember Bill the cat. That's correct. Yes. Um, yeah. And his many now, hairballs. They don't do it on purpose, but, you know. Do they? Sometimes I want. They, yeah. I mean, I don't Dogs know. Dogs don't do hairballs, though. Thank goodness. I don't know where else it would go, um, but I often kick myself for not training my cats to use the toilet the way that you see <laughs> some cats on the internet somehow know how yeah. to do it magically because there's that noise in the middle of the night where you just go like, "Yep, it's dark. I'm not getting up, and I just don't even want to know where that is right now." So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. Ha I, Happy I, Tuesday, everyone. I crashed the party again. I needed a picture. Oh, hey, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> you guys keep talking. Hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye. Sure, bye. bye. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I thought she was going to be like, Sarah, well, I, I saw people you. In, I saw people in chat saying, welcome back, Luria. And I was like, oh, did she join the chat room? And then that's funny. Yeah. I like it. Do, 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 do. Yeah, do, I uh, do, do, do. I started petting Sawyer this morning, and most of Sawyer stuck to my hand. Ooh, uh. mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, you need to be yeah. brushed. So I took him outside and brushed. And what's funny with Ray, because she's taller and bigger. You'd think she'd have more hair, but she's short hair everywhere except her hips. So I, you know, brushing her on, I was getting a little bit off. Uh, and then I go to her hips, and it just comes off in like, I know tumbleweeds just come out of her. Yeah, and it's funny because you think like, oh well, a entire animal just came off of this animal. We must be done. <laughs> Seriously, but even that seems to like, you know, create more shedding. Yeah, it's just well because it releases the matted hair that was below it or something. I think. Yeah, it's you know every year, it's you know it's been a solid decade, and every year I'm just like, oh god, we're here, and then sometime in the summer it'll all come down and. Life will continue. Life finds a way. Somehow. Somehow. You know? Just soldier on, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a crazy week. We've got cement trucks outside my house. Every time I think, well, the construction next door has got to be wrapping up. Mm, yeah. They figure out a way to be like, now we're digging some weird ditch that we <laughs> just decided to do today. And we, had a, we, had, we had a parade of cement trucks this week over here too, because there's a, a house being built at the end of the cul-de-sac uh, and they had the crane, you know, the bit like, like they're building a skyscraper and, and yeah. now it's gone. So I'm, they must've done whatever, maybe it was a chimney that or something. I don't know, but yeah, it's, uh, it was intense. It, it's like, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, and some days I'm like, eh, whatever. I'm just, it's just, it is what it is. And the mm. other days I'm like, I can't think. Why are you doing this to me? 
but such is Los Angeles. Such sure is life in the big city. Yep. Big sprawling city. Los it's... Angeles. Our own Paul McCartney. <laughs> is it though? <laughs> I you know, it's it's Yes, it, it is. Wait, wait, I guess you think that people would have had enough of silly freeways. But I look around me and I see it isn't so. <laughs> Oh uh, my goodness. <laughs> I really like this recipe book idea. I'm into it. So I know how to handle the publication logistics, but we would need someone to design it and do the layout and stuff. Um, with the recipe book, you know, when, okay, so I've got, I haven't mentioned this, but I have a new book out called Gallium, uh, available on Amazon and Kindle and whatnot. Uh, this tells the story of a salvager who loses her job uh, because she moves to a different part of the system and is persecuted by the historical society who doesn't want her to uh, reveal her findings. That sounds interesting. Go check it out. But anyway, you do this. It's like, yeah, you need a nice, nice cover. And then the inside to, you know, be readable and that's it. When you do a recipe book, recipe books usually have like pictures and illustrations and sometimes pretty like lots of pictures, yeah. curly cue things around the recipe to make it look nice. So, or, or, think, or, you know, not just a picture of the finished result, for, but like prep pictures, the steps, know, first do this, yeah, here's what it looks like yeah, while you're yeah, doing yeah. it. So. so there's the design elements and the, uh, there's the design elements to make it attractive and there's the design elements to make it usable, which should also be attractive. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is if anybody out there is like, <laughs> I, I am great at laying out recipe books, let us know. Yeah. Um, cause yeah, we can, we can, I can do the soliciting and the editing and the pasting in. I also, not that, you know, I didn't don't. mean to assume that you and Roger couldn't do that. If you have a secret talent at recipe book layout, please let me know. I just I have a secret talent for following recipes and then eating the results. Gotcha. You're so you're the same as me. Yeah, I don't I don't know that I've ever even written any of my recipes down for anybody. You know, in a way that I thought looked nice and made sense. I, I will add my growing up, I just read a lot of recipe books because my dad had like a stack ton of them because he runs a restaurant. So and it's weird. Some of them do a lot of photos. Others are very skimpy um, and just have very direct instructions. Like, mm -hmm. And then there's other ones that kind of add a lot of flowery like context like this dish is from blah, blah, blah. And they had to cook it this way, but we live in the 20th century. So you can use your other, you know, like they, they have all this historical right. mm -hmm. cultural mm -hmm. context to, to, yeah, we're not making a big joy of cooking thing here. So uh, that's the joy of cooking is the one that has like, you know, it's, it's a textbook on gastronomy in addition to recipes. I think we could also have a section. I mean, maybe it's just me, but a section on like, weird food in a pinch because i got lots of that oh. you know? like weird food to like you would make you mean low bandwidth recipes correct yeah like if you if 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 it comes down to it here's how to make the most basic of snacks a little bit more interesting compression by Sarah algorithms Lane. that's right for you know like like how i i have my ways of making cottage cheese a whole meal it's easy. It's yeah. kind of weird, though. It's like it an MP3. Mm. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. making a very small file contain almost all of the music. Mm -hmm. you're and as you're to... eating it, it seems more complicated than it is. Right. I and just I mean, I just discovered I could make hamburger, cook hamburger patties in my toaster oven. And it works pretty well. Oh, yeah. That's a, yeah. That's a nice little. So, I mean, yeah, we could do little right? life hack type things like yeah. that, too. Because, yeah. honestly, it saves me on cleaning up the grease because it all catches in the foil. I, I often cook eggs in a coffee mug in the microwave. Ah, uh, yes. The coffee mug recipe. 40 seconds. Uh, you can mix it with a little bit of milk, a little bit of water. 40 seconds. Put in your salt and pepper, maybe even some cheese. Huh. And... I you have a coffee mug shaped <laughs> omelet. I nice I do eat. something very similar, except they use a measure or a, a measuring cup. 
like a one of those Pyrex mm-hmm. glass ones. Oh yeah, yeah. That I makes it a little that. broader. Yeah. I, I put like three eggs, beaten eggs, and I put the eggs in there, beat it, and then I add uh, the shredded cheese, and then I take a little bit of like generally uh, um, like uh, a pretty good salsa, like the one they make in the the supermarket, not like the off the shelf, and I put it in and pretty good and if i need ham or anything like that you can just take it out dice it throw it in that sounds good it also would make everything well probably equally hot which is just like there's there's something about at least my little egg thing and again you know this is why we're doing a recipe book is like when i do fried eggs with avocado and salsa which is often I want the salsa to be cold and I ah. add it exactly last and then I eat it right away. So like it doesn't actually make the rest of it cold, but it has that, you know. I just do it because it reminds me of huevos rancheros. And yeah, I love yeah. Rancheros. I mean, hot salsa is great, but you know, I'm like, huh, I never would have really thought to put salsa in the pan and heat it up before I eat it. But More recipes good. coming uh, for the patrons uh, after the break, uh, but we'll say goodbye to our national network. <laughs> our video.